then I took a break from that, those books, and I started the Kindle Clear Out Readathon. The first book I read in that, if you, I'm going to go through these briefly because I am trying to make this a little shorter. Um, I have everything in both of my Kindle Clear Out Reading Athon, my Kindle Clear Out vlogs. So, the first one I read is The Merman's Kiss by Tamsin Lay. This is a merman romance. A girl, you know, falls into the ocean. She starts this romance with this merman. And it's pretty, it's pretty cute. It was a pretty cute story for, you know, how short it was. And um, I just, I really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy reading that one. And I read it, rated it four stars. The next one I read is Define Pack Law by Eve Lang Langless. Um, this is a reverse harem wolf shifter romance. Very good. I also rated it four stars. I Think I Might Love You, I read Next by Christina C. Jones. I rated this one four stars. Pretty hilarious. Um, they're, <laughs> how they meet is really hilarious. Um, I really laughed out loud in this one a lot too. Um, then I read Sicko by Emma Jones. This was four stars. This is a very dark revert, um, not reverse, a dark romance and also taboo because it's stepbrother and stepsister. Then I read Rush by Emma Scott. This was a very emotional story. Um, I rated this one five stars because it was amazing. Then I read Forever True by Rebecca Gallo. This was, um, this was like a St. Patrick's Day novella and it was quite perfect that I read this one because I read it like I think I read it on St. Patrick's Day or like a day before or day after. It was somewhere in that week. So it was pretty perfect that I had chose this book to read in that particular week. Um, it was a short novella. It, I rated it three stars. Um, you know, it's hard to connect with such a short story, but it was good for what it was. And I read Block Shot by Kennedy Ryan. This, this is the second book in a hoop series. I rated this one four stars. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as the first book or the third book, but it was still really good. Don't get me wrong. It was still really good. But this is about a couple who had met in college and then this huge misunderstanding happened and she hated him for that. And then they connect like 10 years later in life when they're both have very su successful careers. And this was their second chance romance. Then I read King of Lies by Whitney G. This was pretty wild. This I rated four stars. This is about a guy and a girl who, or a man and a woman who fall in love with each other and they get married and then he kidnaps her. Like he keeps her in his home and doesn't let her leave because he's really supposed to kill her. He deals with these people who you know, take people out <laughs> and she's the one of the ones that are supposed to be taken out, but he has fallen for her. And so he's trying to keep her alive. And I read Hookshot by Kennedy Ryan. <laughs> my favorite, favorite book of the month. This was my favorite book that I read in March. This was the third book in the Hoop series. Simply amazing. Rated at five stars, of course. This book follows Keenan and Lotus. And Lotus is actually the best friend of the heroine from book one. Keenan is a basketball player who, and um, he is infatuated with Lotus. Lotus has experienced trauma from childhood and she is working through all of that. And so she has kind of like said no to relationships, no to hookups, you know, anything like that. But he's pretty persistent and, you know, is a friend to her but also wants more from her when she is ready um he's very good with her good for her and this was just an incredible love story i love this one so much um it had me bawling i i was up late at night sitting in my bed just crying my eyes out because of scenes from this book but simply wonderful then I read Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. I rated this one five stars. This is about a girl who finds this man in the jungle who's been raised by gorillas. This is a Tarzan retelling and it was simply amazing too. So those were all the 10 books that I read for the Kindle Clear Out Readathon. 
And then after the readathon ended, I knew that there was a novella in the hoop series. And so I'm like, well, I just finished reading the hoop series. So I'm going to go ahead and read the novella as well. So that way that series is complete until she writes another one. <laughs> but uh, this is the hoops holiday story, which is the novella in the story in the series. And I rated it four stars because it was really good. This focused on a different couple. And this was just a quick, you know, story of, for, of them. But it also had other scenes of like uh, the couples from each of the first three books. So it was cute. I really enjoyed seeing the couples again from the other books. Then I read Dirty Kisses by Kenya Wright. This is the pick for the Taboo Book Club in March. I read this one. I rated it four stars. This one was kind of wild as well. <laughs> um, probably considered dark romance since there is like murder and killing and very gruesome scenes in this in this story. So this is not really for the faint of heart. Um, this is about a girl who is her brother. She finds out her brother is in trouble with from this Russian mob boss and so he chooses her to like clean his money wash his money and uh, so she does it in exchange for her brother's freedom and things a lot of things happen in this book a lot of action where she practically saves him and he is she's much more than he thought she was going to be like she's was almost you know she's like his equal in ways and he has a lot of respect for her and of course they have an attraction to each other which they act out on and then something is revealed about herself that she didn't even know so it's pretty wild this is the first book in the series I do plan to continue on with the series um but I did enjoy this one and I gave it four stars so then I got back to the Getting Lucky series by Megan Quinn. I read the third book in that series, which is That Secret Crush. This follows the brother Reed. And he had, um, I can't remember the hero, heroine's name in this one. But he and her agree to like have a relationship. Like, <clears throat> They agree to have fun together. <laughs> and so they start a relationship. He has just always felt like a failure because he and the girl's brother had started a restaurant because they were both chefs. And they had started a restaurant pretty early on when they were still very young. And it failed because her brother got into a relationship with the girl that they hired to like manage the restaurant well she stole all of their money so they were penniless and broke and so their restaurant failed their friendship broke apart he moved away and now he has just been flailing like he doesn't really know what he's doing with his life and that all that kind of gets in the way of their relationship because now he has this opportunity to run a restaurant that his father wants him to start. His father wants him to run a, a restaurant for him. But he says, you know, you have to do it with your friend. So he's trying to get his friend back on board. He, he finally agrees. But he says, no, you cannot date my sister because, you know, we're not bringing another relationship back into this because, you know, he has, they have been hurt in the past. So he chooses the, the restaurant over the girl and it breaks her heart. She doesn't know what happened because, you know, they both have admitted to each other that they love each other. This book really shows you the beginning of the relationship all the way to the end. And even the end of the relationship is kind of like a second chance romance. Their story, <clears throat> their story was also very amazing. I love the third book in this series. Of course, I rated it five stars. Then I read Flock by Kate Stewart. I rated this one four stars. This was on my March TBR as well. By the way, I read all of my books, all of the books on my TBR, on my March TBR, except for one. I cannot tell you the last time I almost, I read almost 
my entire TBR list. Anyway, to get back to Flock, this was one of the books on my TBR. I enjoyed the first book, <laughs> which is Flock. This girl moves in with her dad. Her mom is not doing well. Her mom has raised her. You know, she's been a single mom all these years. Um, but her mom is moving in with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend says, no, you can't move in here because, you know, he just doesn't have the room. And she's 18 or 19. No, yeah, she's 19. I had to think a minute there. She's 19. She moves in with her dad because he told her that she is going to inherit, you know, pretty big inheritance. Um, but she has to work a year at his company. You know, he's a very wealthy businessman, but he's never really been a father to her. But she's agreed to do this because she's, she wants to inherit the money to help her mother. So she knows whenever she inherits the money, she wants to give a good portion of that back to her mother to help her. And so she goes to this town and moves in with her dad. And of course, their relationship is very, very strained. But she meets a guy at orientation on the very first day of work. And they become friends. He takes her back to his place where, like... There, there's a huge party going on at his house. There's a lot of people there. He introduces her to his friends and they really begin up a very good friendship. He, um, he takes her on hikes. He, you know, he involves her a lot. Like they're together a lot. And then, um, a relationship blooms between them. And, um, she's just really very happy with him. They're having an amazing summer. And then he wants to, you know, he kind of, he has his best friend, Dominic. His friend, is, his name is Sean. His, friend, his best friend is Dominic. And he says, you know, that they have shared girls in the past. And so that's ultimately what happens. They share her. And so she's in like a relationship with both of them. They all love each other. There's never any sharing, like, the guys never are with each other. They just share her. And they all three are in love. <laughs> and something happens at the end of the book where they betray her. And she doesn't know why. And it just leaves off with a cliffhanger. And she's very hurt and devastated. So I immediately had to pick up the second book, which is Exodus. I gave this book three stars. I really wanted to give it one star <laughs> because of how wrong the Arthur did me in this book. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I had to give it three stars because the writing is good. The story is still, I mean, it's a good, oh, I got hurt. My heart was hurt by what happened in this book. And I can't tell you what it is because that'd be a huge spoiler. Um, this, just let, I'll just let you know, if you start reading the series, just beware, things are gonna happen. <laughs> things you're not gonna like, and it's just gonna hurt you. <laughs> I just wanted, if I had a physical book, I would have thrown it against the wall. <laughs> It was, it was so not pleasant. I'm like, why did you make me go through this? <laughs> oh, anyway, I gave it three stars because I just hated how it, how it turned out. I mean, the second book leaves off with an HEA of some sort. <laughs> Not the HEA I wanted, but it does leave off with an HEA. And then, um, everybody, I mean, uh, it's so hard to talk about this book because I want to tell you what happened, but I can't, obviously I can't. Um, it, it leaves off with an HEA. I'll just say that. Technically. <laughs> So then I was very hurt from that book. So I had to, had to, um, 
get some good feelings again. So I picked up the fourth book in the Getting Lucky series by Megan Quinn. That is that swoony feeling. This revolves around the fourth brother, the youngest brother. And his name is Brig. <laughs> he is a hopeless romantic. He adores like romantic movie movies, romantic books. He always is thinking like of these grand gestures, like he's even helped his brothers in the past, <laughs> which was quite funny. Um, do these grand gestures for their girls and they're always making fun of him for how he is. But he is so cute and adorable and he wants a romance. You know, he wants the love of his life, but he can't find her even though she's right under his nose. So this is, I think her name is Eve and she works at like the coffee shop in town. It was her parents shop, but they passed away. So now she runs it and uh, you know, he goes in to get his coffee every morning. She's had a crush on him for so long. And she starts talking about wanting to expand her business. She actually wants to get a um, a building that's more like on the main street where you can, that's, you know, more, that can be seen easily. And she wants to expand her business, not only coffee, but like a tea shop with, you know, just more variety of things she wants to offer. There is a building next to Briggs Mechanic Shop that is opening and they help her take it. Of course, Brig really steps in and helps her with this. They become friends. And there is also a secret pen pal thing going on. One of the, they have started this, like try to find your love through this secret pen pal thing in town. So they're both writing to each other. She knows it's him because her best friend put it together, but he has no idea it's her. And so they're writing these letters back and forth to each other also. And they're becoming best friends, which of course she has much deeper feelings for him. And he is just so blind. He is just so blind and oblivious to her. Like she even... She gives him these clues. Like one is this, this, she makes these whoopie pies and she sends him some in the mail from like, you know, his secret pen pal. She makes him some of almost identical ones in person to like try for her new shop. He doesn't even put it together that it's the same, her, that it's the same person. And, um, he finds out that she has been secretly crushing on somebody. And so now he's ready to help her find, to find out who it is and to help him, her win him. It's like, oh, break. <laughs> Put it together, would you? But um, he finally, finally learns that it's him. And so he just, you know, jumps all in with her, you know, and they have this incredible night together. You know, he's just all for it. But then he realizes that, you know, he, he has started like this, this thing with the girl he's been writing. And so he brushes her aside because he feels like he cheated on the girl he's been writing to. Eve is very hurt by this, even though she knows, you know, it's the same person. But she doesn't want to tell him because she feels like, you know, he should choose her anyway, you know. And so he has to do a grand gesture and groveling to get her back. And then, you know, of course, when he realizes this, the same person, <laughs> this was such a good book. Um, I probably, the, my top favorites were probably the first two in the series, but all of them are five star reads, really. They're all hilarious. They all have, you know, such a romantic story. And I enjoyed this series so, so much. The next book I read is Mr. Bodyguard by Lauren Rowe. This is the third book in the Morgan Brothers series. No, wait. Fourth book. The fourth. This is the fourth book in the Morgan Brothers series. This was also um, one I had on my TBR. 
This is follows the friend of the Morgan brothers. So his name is Xander. He lands this job as this bodyguard to this girl who she was like a teen, you know, a childhood star. She played on like this, she had this popular Disney show. Now she's like a singer and dancer and she's on tour and he is the new bodyguard to protect her. And this is their relationship, their love story. And it was simply fantastic. I didn't quite like this one as much as the other ones, even though I, st I still rated this one five stars. So don't get me wrong. I still loved it. I just loved the other ones better, especially uh, Hero and Ball Peen and Hammer. Those, those two are my absolute favorites in the series. But Lauren Rowe can do no wrong. So I really enjoyed this one as well. The next one is The Finish Line by Kate Stewart. This is the third book in the Ravenhood trilogy or series. So even though she technically left off on an HEA on Exodus, she wrote this third book to expand the story and to give more clarity to, you know, <laughs> the couple who ends up as a couple as at, at the end of Exodus, which... You know, I can't tell you because that would be a huge spoiler. But this is just more of their story, more of what they went through to get to where they are. The whole book is pretty much the hero groveling for the heroine because he has made so many mistakes with her. And he is trying to win her back. So I really can't tell you much more than that. I gave it a three star because I just, I wasn't in it you know I, I the Arthur messed up so badly <laughs> she messed up so badly for me at Exodus that I couldn't just I couldn't get behind this couple I only read it just to finish it to finish the trilogy to finish the series but my heart wasn't in it I drug through this book and I just couldn't wait until it was done I gave it a three star because it's it's a solid book for what it is. I just, it was just meh for me. So anyway, glad I got that series out of the way. I really thought I would adore the series. And the first book is pretty good until we get to, you know, the betrayal part of it. But um, I really thought that I would adore the series because I heard so many, heard so much hype about these this, these books. And... They really were a pretty huge disappointment for me. So then I, <laughs> then I was in the mood for something taboo. I'm just, I get in, you know, I'm a mood reader. I was in the mood for something taboo, like extremely taboo. I couldn't think of anything except for one that I've read before, which is The Wild by Kay Webster. I had first read this one. I rated this one five stars the first time I read it. This is the second time I read it. I rated it three stars this time around because I just didn't get the enjoyment out of it as I did the first time. The first time, you know, I was on the edge of my seat thinking, you know, how is she going to pull this off? Because this is about a daughter and a dad. <laughs> it sounds horrible. It sounds horrible even talking about it. <laughs> there is a loophole in this book though. So I won't tell you what it is, but there is a loophole. So just, just, just hear me out. <laughs> Um, but it kept me on the edge of my seat the first time I read it because I'm like, how, how, how is this going to be pulled off to where it's believable? The second time I read it, I just, the hero in the story is just, he just did things that I'm like, mm. I just, I didn't really like how he conducted himself with her. And the second time I read this, it just didn't, I didn't read it like I did the first time. And so I only gave it three stars. The next one I read is A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. This one I've been running to read for a long, long time, but I know it was full of angst, like the whole book. And I'm telling you, like I thought they would like get together, the hero and the heroine. You know, they'd have their happily ever after around, you know, 75%, you know, through the book. No, no. It's like the last page of the book. <laughs> it took so long. 
I'm like, seriously. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was. Oh, okay. So the hero and the heroine meet in high school. She sees him first and he sees her first. But her best friend is the one who, you know, steps up to talk to him. And so her best friend and him have a relationship. You know, she finally accepts it. Like, okay, whatever. I lost, you know, the chance to be with him. But then they, they become best friends because he is there for her a lot of the time. She's there a lot for him. They have drives together. They have common um, interests. They surf together, you know, they just, they turn out to be friends. And then he goes, he's a grade higher than her. So he graduates first, he goes to college. And then she goes to college and then they meet again in college, which she didn't even know he was going to her college. And they meet there and she has a boyfriend because she, she got a boyfriend in high school the last year and now they're going to college together as well. He's single and he wants her, <laughs> but she doesn't want to cheat on her. There is cheating in this book, by the way. So if you don't like cheating, you won't like this book because it happens a couple of times. But um, she has a boyfriend. And then finally, you know, they think they're going to be together and something happens. And it's, that continues through the whole book. Something tragic happens in her life where she leaves college. She doesn't know what to do with herself. She's had this, she's already been dealing with a lot in her life previously, but then this thing happened. I really don't want to tell you in case it's a spoiler. I'm really always afraid of spoiling, <laughs> giving spoilers away accidentally. So she leaves college and she doesn't see him for like three years. And then they see each other in their hometown together and he has waited for her and uh, now they think that they can be together but then she has an opportunity to be an intern in another state so she leaves to be an intern and um, things get in the way there and he wants to try a long distance relationship. She says, no, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's going to be too hard. So he, she breaks his heart again. And then the next thing you know, he's engaged or, you know, he's in a relationship. When she finally is like, okay, I'm going to go get him. I'm going to, you know, I'm ready for this relationship. He's in another, he's in a different relationship with this other woman. Because he's just tired of waiting for her. And so now he's in a relationship. When she's ready to be with him. Oh. Then he becomes engaged. He asks her to be his best lady. And so she goes to his wedding. And things happen. He didn't, he didn't wind up getting married. They say, okay, well now we can be together now. <laughs> Something happens. They are not together. Years pass. Now she's engaged to be married. I'm telling you, one thing happen one thing always keeps them apart. And I really I don't know if I've already said too much about this book. Um, I'm not gonna go any further than that, but I'm just gonna tell you their relationship is pretty like you just wanna rip your hair out. Ah, it's so frustrating, but so good too, because Candy Steiner keeps you on this ride and you just are like just be together already <laughs> you don't get that happily ever after until the very last page of the book though for real it's not until the epilogue so <laughs> and and it's written in a way where you're like wait are they or aren't they <laughs> until like the very last word it's like okay we finally got our ATA, <laughs> but it takes a lot to get there and it's a journey. And <clears throat> even though how frustrating it was, it was still a really good story. And um, I give props to Candy Steiner for writing such an amazing story that really, you know, 
pulls you through this journey of them, you know, trying to be together, but all these obstacles are in their way. And uh, I finally have read it, have read it. So now I can say that I've read it. And the last book that I read in March was Roommate by Serena Bowen. This I think is like a spinoff series of her True North series. And this follows one of the cousins of the Shipley family, which is you see in the True North series. He, um, this is an MM romance and there's two heroes in this story. One is Kieran, who is Kieran Shipley and the other is Roderick. And he moves back home. His, he, he tries to go stay with his parents because he just got out of this bad relationship. His parents won't even let him inside because of who he is. He's gay. So he is homeless and is sleeping in his car trying to, he, he lands this job at this coffee shop that is run by Audrey and Zara, which you see in the True North series. And Kieran also works there as well. They, of course, remember each other from high school. <laughs> and um, anyway, Karen gets his own place. He moves out of his parents' house. And he finds out that Roderick needs a place to stay because he's living in his car. And so they become roommates. And there is a lot of attraction between them two. Karen has never really acted upon it. He's always known that he has had an attraction for men but he um he hasn't you know he's not open about it he's not open about anything in his life he keeps everything inside and um they become closer and you know they're more friendly with each other at first until before a relationship happens you know Roderick is a chef and he's teaching Kieran how to cook and just being around each other because they're roommates brings them closer together and they have a relationship, but it's a secret relationship because Kieran is not ready to come out. And Roderick is, has been in that type of relationship before. He does not want to be in a secret relationship again because, you know, he's just tired of hiding who he is. And so there's obstacles along the way until Kieran is ready himself to come out. And it was a good book. I rated it four stars. I really was in the mood to read him. I really want to reread him by Serena Bowen. Um, but I read Roommate instead because it was on my TBR. But so I, I was expecting like him quality, but it didn't quite rise up to that. So that's why I didn't give it a five star, but it was still really good. I enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. And that is the last book in the series, or that is the last book that I read in the month of March. Okay, now I'm done. So anyway, let me know if you've read any of these or if you haven't, if any of these are interesting to you. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.